So totalitarianism within a household where a narcissistic person is looking to control the dynamics of the family by making the family submissive to the narcissist, making the family fawn to the narcissist, rules the narcissist, dynamics the narcissist, behaviour and why people don't necessarily see this happening and why narcissistic people do this. More often than not, people don't see this happening because narcissistic people create, they start off by creating a an environment of comfort, of security, of well-being, of independence, of happiness. And it's, they lead you into a false sense of security that if you just live life on their terms, all will be okay. However, it never works out that way because narcissistic people are looking to psychologically torture those around them to get what the narcissist wants from those around them. If you refuse to live life on the narcissistic person's terms, there's going to be a lot of coercion. There's going to be a lot of coercive, controlling behaviour from the narcissist to the family members to get the family members to live life on the narcissistic person's terms so that the narcissist can evade exposure for their behaviour. And they make it so those around them, them, those close to them, their friends, their family, don't speak out against the narcissistic person because those who speak out against the narcissistic person are often ridiculed, scapegoated, bullied, isolated. People are suppressed into not speaking out about that narcissistic family member for fear of retaliation from the narcissist. Narcissistic people make it so those around them are terrified to say what they think, say what they feel, say what they are wanting to do, say what they believe the narcissist has done to be wrong. They make people absolutely terrified of being able to speak out against the narcissistic person. Narcissists fall silent. They use the silent treatment to punish people. They gaslight people's reality. They project out onto people. They accuse people of unjust things that more often than not is what the narcissist is actually doing to those people. They isolate people from support, from financial support, from friends, from family. They invalidate people at every turn. They make people feel like they're no longer good enough, no longer capable. They make it so people can't think straight, so that people cannot be themselves around the narcissist. You don't speak out because you're going to be made out that whatever opinion you have is wrong, whatever thought you have is wrong, whatever feeling you have is in somehow wrong. A narcissist is going to flirt with somebody in front of you and then when you say, oh that's made me feel a bit, mm, they're just going to accuse you of being jealous. A narcissist is going to humiliate somebody and then when you speak out, when you stand up for that person or when you stand up for yourself, they're going to accuse you of being too sensitive. They're going to do something and then when you speak out against what they've done, to you or to those around you. They're going to accuse you of overreacting. They're going to make out that, they're going to convince you and convince those around you that your emotional reactions to their actions are the problem to distract you from the fact that the narcissist's actions are causing those emotional reactions, thus the narcissist's actions are the problem. But the narcissist is going to do it in such a way that if you do stand up for yourself against them, you're going to lose your friends, you're going to lose your family, you're going to lose your career, you're going to lose your home. They gain enablers and fly monkeys to create that sort of mob mentality within the family unit. A narcissist will gather enablers from their own children, from their parents, from their spouses, from their friends. They will gather armies of enablers and flying monkeys so that if you dare speak out against them, if you dare call a narcissistic person out, 
you are going to be isolated from your own friendship group, isolated from your workplace, lose your job, lose your home, isolated from your children. You are going to be left out if you dare to speak out about a narcissistic person's behaviour because of how they manipulate the situation and manipulate those around them. Narcissistic people often flex they often find a truth and then falsify the reality by lying about that truth so people can recognize the truth within the situation which leads it to becoming easier to believe the narcissist lies and the narcissist is lying to evade exposure while if at all possible, scapegoating somebody else, passing the blame over to somebody else for the narcissist behaviour. And if they can, they're going to pass the blame on to somebody who is willing to stand up against the narcissist, who could expose the narcissist. So they can gain the enablers to become flying monkeys and attack the person who's speaking the truth so the narcissist doesn't get exposed. When friends or family don't toe the line or even when they do they get psychologically manipulated in such a way they lose sense of themselves and often end up fawning to the narcissist. A narcissist will falsify reality to their own agenda so that people cannot be an individual around the narcissist. People have to conform to the narcissist. A narcissist inflict this on people, they force this on people by psychologically terrifying people, by causing fear and instability and insecurity within people. They start off with that comfort blanket and then when they've got you all nice and comfortable, they rip that away from you and place that fear into you so you don't speak out against them, you don't voice your opinion anymore for fear of being wrong, for fear of being isolated fear of pain, fear of not being believed, fear of humiliation, because a narcissist will go all out to humiliate those who the narcissist perceives has turned against the narcissist by simply standing up against the narcissist's false reality. And people often fawn to the narcissist also out of sheer exhaustion. The the battles that narcissistic people put you through when you try to have a conversation with them and they claim, I don't want to argue with you. And then they throw tons of word salad your way and accuse you and blame you and claim that, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot you were perfect. Oh, you're always like this when you're in the wrong. You can never admit to fault. They project out onto you what they're doing to you to confuse you. They cause sleep deprivation, they cause panic, they cause fear, they cause confusion, they cause absolute chaos within the family dynamics, within the home, within the workplaces and within your mind. People become so tired and so drained and they're looking for peace, they're looking for harmony, they're looking to get along and quite often people can end up agreeing with a narcissist just to save the hassle, save the argument, save the chaos. People often end up fawning and pleasing the narcissist to find peace and find happiness, although you never find it because a narcissist isn't happy with that and once they've got one thing from you, they go after more. People are looking for a normal life. People are looking for a healthy life. People are looking for what society has classed as normal. And because people can grow up with narcissistic parents, people can normalise certain behaviours that isn't normal at all. It's actually coercive controlling behaviour. It's actually totalitarianism within the person's household. Yet we don't see it because we see these things on a grand scale, on a mass scale. We don't see them as happening so close to home. We don't see this malevolent kind of behaviour happening within our own family units, within our own workplaces, within our own friendship groups. And because it has been normalised, when narcissistic people do the little things, people do, enablers do just say, oh, you know what they're like. Oh, well, people do that. Oh, well, they've had a tough time. And narcissistic people will use their victim status. 
most people, if, every, if not everybody, has been a victim of something at some point in time within their lives. However, narcissistic people will use that victim status to gain sympathetic attention, to get enablers, to support them, to create that mob mentality, to attack others. They're not a genuine victim. Genuine victims do not want to see other people suffer the pain that they have suffered. Narcissistic people do. Narcissistic people think, if I've suffered, then you should too. And when you do stand up, when you do speak out, because a narcissist has already smeared your name, you've got that mob mentality of the narcissist enablers and flying monkeys who then come and attack you. So it becomes easier to stay quiet about what is happening. Narcissists are looking to keep you down. They're looking to shut you up. They're incredibly exploitative and incredibly cruel people. And those around them tend to lose faith within themselves and faith within society, faith within people, and often then end up fawn to, fawning to the narcissist's behaviour. And they often end up believing anything that the narcissist says to them because they're, they're that exhausted, that drained. It's easier to believe the narcissist lies, believe the narcissist's justifications to find that sense of peace, although it, it doesn't give you peace because it's not the truth. The narcissist has falsified things. It's easier to take responsibility when a, people often ask, why don't people just leave when someone cheats? Well, most cases that does happen when it's when you're dealing with a narcissistic person it's not that simple because they've drained people so much they've exhausted people so much they've blamed and shamed and criticized and judged people so much when a narcissistic person cheats and gets found out and then the narcissist turns around and says well it's your fault you weren't paying me enough attention people believe that lie to try and find some form of closure, try and find some peace within the situation of where they're living a world of complete chaos. Narcissistic people lie to everybody. They might take a truth and then they exploit that truth into a lie. They lie to friends, they lie to family, they lie to work colleagues, they lie to family members such as children, they lie to family members such as partners. Narcissistic people falsify reality to suit the narrative they want depending on the person they're speaking to. They have a complete disrespect for other people. They have a willingness to falsify reality. They have a willingness to lie, to achieve their own gains. And because there is some truth within that lie, it's easier to believe it. It's easier to believe the lie that there is some truth to, to in order to protect yourself. Narcissistic people look for other people's weaknesses. They look for other people's insecurities. So because there is that insecurity there, then a narcissist is going to attack you, personally attack you on that insecurity. Because there's some truth to their attack, people often end up believing the narcissist's attack and then feel less about themselves. A narcissist will then up their false accusations to unjustly justify their behaviour towards another person. They will unjustly accuse people of things to confuse people, to drain people, to exhaust people. So people unwittingly fawn out of sheer exhaustion, sheer desperation and fear of what will happen if they don't. So why do narcissistic people do this? Narcissistic people, part of the criteria is that envy and that arrogance. They, they believe they're entitled. Another part of the criteria is that sense of entitlement. They believe they're entitled to things in life that they haven't earned. And they believe those who have earned things aren't entitled to them and have stolen from the narcissist. They are incredibly envious of other people. 
You can have people who admire people and who look to attain what other people have got, yet not take from that other person, who are pleased for that other person. Then you can have narcissistic people who seek to be admired and believe that what somebody else has, has been stolen from them. So they look for people who also have less than those people who have worked hard to achieve to gain enablers, to attack those people, to pull those people down. Rather than attaining it for themselves, they're looking to destroy what other people have got. And narcissistic people often sell it to themselves that they've got a moral obligation. They're doing society a favour. They're helping people out by destroying people, by victimising people, by hurting people, by sabotaging people, by doing some of the most cruel and calculated things to people, but they justify it within their own mind that they've got a sort of moral high ground and they're doing the world a favour when they're not. They're doing the world a disservice and they're hurting people and punishing people for their own gains. And narcissistic people can manipulate some of the most intelligent people because people fawn to the narcissist behaviour because they don't see the depths of the narcissist lies and they're looking for peace, they're looking to agree, they're looking to please people, they're looking to help people out, help lift people up, not recognising that narcissistic people exist in the world to the extent that they do that are trying to bring people down, trying to destroy people, even trying to destroy their own family, trying to destroy their own children trying to sabotage their own partners. If anyone has any thoughts on this video, please do add those into the comments. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support of the channel. It's greatly appreciated. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about narcissistic behaviour to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with within your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you understand and overcome narcissistic and emotional abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, then please please do subscribe. If you are looking for further help and support in understanding and overcoming narcissistic and emotional abuse, I do have several online guides available and those teachable links are in the video description. If you're looking for someone to speak to or have partnered with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is also in the video description. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.